presentation is going to be about CSS and Ava, who's also a Google developer expert, is going to show us some cool stuff we can do with CSS and animations that maybe we haven't thought about until now with Part C, as I understand. So without further ado, I'm going to invite her so we can show us, she can show us what she knows. Hi everybody, some people found their way up here. I had quite a struggle with finding the, the elevator that actually got me here. So welcome to the best venue in, at this conference as I see you because we have the nicest view. So enjoy your time here. We're going to talk about CSS first, which is my chosen technology. And we're going to paint the web a little bit. You will find that my slides are pink because hot pink is my favorite CSS color. For every CSS developer, you know that you have to pick your, your favorite named color. Mine is hot pink or papaya whip. So yeah, that's, that's kind of a thing. If you didn't know, front-end developers sometimes have their favorite CSS colors for debugging. It's very nice. Don't forget to take them out after you debug because otherwise your customer will see your hot pink, which never happened. Okay, so we're gonna create some art with code. But first, uh, let's talk about me. You can see a little bit of me. That's my, uh, my self-portrait. Uh, I'm, I'm furiously typing. Uh, I'm a front-end developer. I write React all day, so I don't get to do any CSS anymore, or hardly any, because I write style components now, which is basically CSS, but in JavaScript, it hurts my little, little soul a little bit that we have to now put the things that we first divided back together, but it's fine, I'm over it. Not. Um, I'm also a Google developers expert uh, since last year, November, which means I do stuff with Google. Uh, and I'm a coding artist, and it says artist uh, because I once applied to art school 10 years ago, and they told me never to come back again, and I will never be an artist. So I'm a coding artist now. Uh, you can also see that I'm an artist by the quality of my self-portrait. Yeah, great art skills. Code is magic. If you remember the first time when you coded a, a line of JavaScript or whatever language you did, did you do, do you remember feeling that bit of excitement, the creating something where previously there was nothing? I remember my first lines of JavaScript. I wrote a little function that printed out the first 10 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. I felt like God because I had written a piece of code that printed out numbers that weren't previously there. That was so awesome to me, and that's what got me very excited about programming, and that's what got me addicted to learning technology and to actually build something. And that is the magic of code, and that is what I feel programming and coding should be about, about creating something that wasn't previously there, that excites us and that makes us feel like magicians. And that is what I try to keep alive in my daily programming work, uh, so that I still feel this excitement about my job and that it doesn't become a drag. And the thing is, in our day-to-day -day work, we go to the office, we open up the issue tracker, we see there are X amount of bugs and X amount of features, we take the top one, we code it, we submit a pull request, it's merged, we pick the next one. In order to not get into a rut of doing this constantly, picking the next bug, picking the next feature, creating a pull request, merging all that stuff. I like to keep the magic alive by doing stuff with code that it's not meant to be doing. And this is what I'm going to show you. First I need a drink, I'm sorry. Because we as programmers are most of all creators. We build something, and that is what we sometimes forget when we do these day-to-day -day things. We build something really, really awesome and really cool that we can be really excited about. So think about what you actually do. You build software for people to use. You build websites. You build apps. It's really amazing. It's like building a house, but you build it on your computer. So be excited about your technology and be excited about your skills and feel that you are a creator and you make something really creative and really awesome. And you have the power to build really cool things that make people happy. And my chosen technology is CSS. Even though I don't get to do it very often at work, I like to do it at home. And it was my first language that I ever got really excited about. 
I started developing as a 13-year-old when there was Neopets around. Does anybody remember Neopets? I'm that old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, it was a website where you had a pet. It was like it, it was the, the like the precursor of Tamagotchis and, and Pokemon, I think. You had a pet and, and it could grow and you could fight against other pets. But the thing that happened was you could build your, your pet a website. And that's what got a lot of people into developing because people wanted to create a really cool site for their pet. Which sounds really weird, but it got me into HTML, it got me into CSS, it got me into JavaScript and later into PHP. So things that sound really stupid got me into something that is actually now my job and that I love very much. And so throughout the years, I have constantly done this as a side project, not Neopets anymore, but CSS. <laughs> I don't know if Neopets exists anymore. Uh, and I have developed my skills further by doing something that I really love and that I was excited about. Then I started to use as drawings, which is creating art or creating images with just pure CSS. This is not an image, this is just boxes. This is pure CSS code. There's a couple of gradients in it, the, there's a couple of divs that have colors and stuff like that. The, the shadow is, is a tilted gradient and everything. This is my first drawing that I did with CSS. And I put it onto CodePen. I, I got inspired by the, the link to the Instagram account. They actually posted this picture, which was a, a vector graphic. And I love cacti, so I thought I'm going to code this one because it didn't look very difficult. I put it up on CodePen, went to sleep, and the next day it was featured on CodePen, and I got a couple of emails were like, how did you do that? And this is when I... <laughs> I imagine this was the sound people made when they typed it. <laughs> so this was what got me started in creating CSS drawings. This is another one that I made. I wanted to learn about animations because everybody likes animations now on their website. Uh, please don't overdo it with animations. Um, and yeah, I wanted to make a little nice relaxing thing and uh, what happened was I wanted to rotate those rotary thingies uh, and they all went like that because I had no idea about transform origin. So I googled transform origin and I learned that. I now use it at work for other things. I had no idea this property existed. I learned it by creating a, win a windmill. So this is kind of the theme of this talk. Do something, learn something, use it in your day-to-day -day life. The way you learn it doesn't need to be the thing that you end up using it for. So let's draw something, because yay, the code is nice. We're going to make a zombie. I know zombies are kind of over now, but I'm bringing them back. I hope that's okay. Uh, so yeah, if you can't tell, this is a zombie. It has two eyes. It has a little hole where the brain is poking out. Uh, it lost a couple of its teeth, and there is a little bit of a uh, brain spittle. This is what we're going to make, and I will show you all the techniques that I use to create these things. First of all, we, we need shapes. We have one shape in CSS. We have a rectangle. That's the only shape we have. We create a shape by giving it a height and a width. Oops. And we can manipulate that. I make it longer or w wider. So what we can also do with rectangles is use the border radius. Which runs the borders. So what we can also do is make a little oops, circles by giving it a percentage value. So I just lied, I said rectangles are the only shapes we can do. We can also make circles, which is very useful, not just for drawing with CSS, but for your day-to-day -day life as a developer. So for the zombie, what I did was I had like a, no, bear with me a bit, please.
Okay, so again here, if you're familiar with uh, padding and margin, top, right, bottom, left, that's what I always preach to my students. Top corner, or top left corner, top right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner is how you do the short hand for, for border radius. And then I, I made it a bit elongated. And this is practically the head that I use for my zombie. So I, I lied a second time because we can also make triangles, but actually triangles are rectangles in disguise because there are no triangles in CSS, which might have frustrated a couple of you before because we, we would assume that there is something very easy to create, like a triangle. No! So what we have to do is we make a rectangle that doesn't have any height or width but does have borders. And then... I showed you here the border top is the yellow one, the border right uh, is the blue one, the border bottom one is, is the purplish one and stuff like that. So what we have to do is we have to decide which of these we're going to keep and make the other ones transparent. So if I say I want to have the arrow on the right, like the one that's pointing to the left, the blue one, what I need to do is make these ones transparent. Oops. So this is our triangle, doesn't look very good, does it? But we can also manipulate the shape of the triangle by manipulating the sides of our rectangle. So if we show these again, so by manipulating the shape of our rectangle, of our invisible rectangle, we can create different shapes of triangles. What are we using that for? Well, there is actually a use case for that in real life. I'm going to show you right after uh, our little head. So this is our zombie's head. What I did was I made a, a circle in its uh, right side brain corner. Uh, it's a black circle with a pseudo class or with a pseudo element of a hot pink circle for the brain. I'm going to talk about pseudo elements later like now. <laughs> so the elements, uh, they are very practical because every single element is actually three elements. You have a, the actual element, you have the element that is right before it and the element that is right after it. So you can abuse this for CSS drawings by using less markup and using more pseudo classes. Uh, pseudo elements, sorry. Um, this helps you to keep your markup concise and also to only use elements that you actually need, which is something that you can use in your day-to-day -day life as a developer as well. You only code the element that you actually need, and for additional things, like little CSS additions or just things that are layout, you can use pseudo elements. So you don't clog up your, clog up your markup with senseless things like a little arrow that, has to, that consists of two parts, but you can actually use one single element, and I'm going to show you. This little thing, this is a one div tool tip. This is a, a normal rectangle that has a tiny little triangle which is not a separate div, but is a pseudo element. So we can use this in our day to day lives when we build tool tips or other little things like buttons that have tiny arrows on the side or stuff like that. Or list items that get arrow shapes on, on the side if you hover them and stuff. That doesn't have to be and should not be separate markup because markup should reflect the actual element and not every single additional thing that actually doesn't belong to, that doesn't belong into the element, but is part of something. Like here in this tooltip, I wouldn't want to have two different divs for a thing that I can do with one. So I added two little circles for our zombie to have eyes for it and we're gonna make it look a little bit more lifelike with box shadow, because box shadow is really awesome. You can do many things with box shadow, like pretend you have more borders than just one. So this is the markup for the box shadow and we're gonna make some little eyelids. The, the shorthand for box shadow is from, 
from right to left. So we're pushing it five pixels to the right. We're pushing it five pixels down. And this is a blur. So it's to the right, to the bottom, and a blur. So what we need for this, because I want to, to create uh, eye bags, because zombies are very tired, and uh -huh, so you need eye bags. Um, for my style of drawing, I don't use any blur, because I want this to be like flat and stuff. So let's go like this. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm gonna fix it later. Um, okay, so these are the yeah. eye bags. Okay, but there is also a second variation of box shadow, which is an inset shadow, which doesn't go outside of your element but stays in it. And the same uh, shorthand applies here. So it's to the right, to the bottom, and a blur. And then the actual color, obviously. So we don't blur it, and we don't push it to the right, but we're going to push it down. And it looks a bit like it was hit in the eye. <laughs> but we can, what we can also do is like, go like this. No. I don't know, you will see in the final image what I actually did. So yeah, you can play around with these. And box shadows we use every day, right? As, as front-end developers, box shadows are like the thing. It doesn't matter if they're blurred or not. And if you just continue to go along and do this kind of stuff and add elements to it, you don't need any other things than what I just showed you. And yes, I know the ear doesn't turn with the head. I have been told it multiple times. I still haven't fixed it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I added a little animation. I animated the eyelids now. Uh, the only thing that animation does is it pushes down the box shadow until it covers the whole eye. And that's a really quick animation with a very long animation delay. Uh, and uh, the, the little drooly thing, uh, they are not animated by height. If you animate height of things, please bear in mind that unless it's winter and your hands are very cold, never animate height or width because it will turn your computer into a radiator. What we do is we transform. This is what we have transforms for because what happens when you animate height or width is it leads to constant repainting of the actual element. So what your computer does is constantly redrawing the thing and it doesn't change it, it just redraws it. So if you have multiple elements that you have animated height or width of, your computer will go crazy and become very, very hot and very loud. So it will sound like a, an airplane taking off. So please don't do that, but use transforms. So we transform and scale it, and that way we can animate height or width. And yeah, and then it has a little transform rotation of the head and not the ear because that was in a different container and I completely forgot it, but that's fine. Um, the, the little feet have a box shadow and that's about it to it. It uses the exact same techniques that I just showed you, just with half an hour more work put into it. Why am I doing this? Because it's fun. Because <laughs> why not? Because why do we draw? Why do we paint? We can take pictures. Pictures show it perfectly. Why do we do art? Why do we create music? Because it, we can. Because it's awesome. Because it makes us happy. And because I like technology and I like to use it for things that it's not meant to be doing and for things that it wasn't created for. So, yeah, why not use technology for something other than its purpose? It's a fun thing. It makes me really happy to create these images and because I suck at drawing, for whatever reason, I'm really good with pushing diffs around and making graphics like that. I cannot, for the life of me, create these things in Illustrator. I'm, I don't know why. It just makes more sense to me in code because this is how I think. I learn new stuff. Like I told you in the beginning, I learned the transform origin thing. 
I constantly learn new little properties because I look for obscure things in CSS that I haven't previously used and I will use them in a way that they are maybe not meant to be to actually initialize them and to, to remember what they are about and what they do. It's also how I learned grid. I made weird cubic drawing things with CSS grid because why not? It made me remember the property and it made me remember the syntax. The community is really fun. The whole CSS drawing thing goes on on CodePen. People share their drawings. There are challenges and, and, and little things going on. Pe people share them on Twitter. People actually send me emails when they've seen my talks and, and they will send me their CodePen links and be like, hey, I've never coded before, but I made this scroll. So that's really, really cool. I'm always happy when that happens. Do we use CSS images in production? No, of course not. Because <laughs> it's a lot of work for a lot of markup that we don't need. And a lot of CSS that we don't want clogging up our code. Also, we have SVGs, and SVGs are awesome. They can do the exact same thing, but better. They are faster. We can animate SVGs. We can do all kinds of cool stuff with SVGs. And we don't have to draw them with code because, obviously, not everybody is a freak like me and is actually better drawing with code than with uh, graphics programs. So, no, we don't use the CSS images in production. We use SVGs. I sometimes will create a little CSS image for, like, a teeny tiny thing if I need an arrow and I don't have one in my icon library or something I will just quickly whip one up because I can if I need a triangle somewhere I will do it like that but as soon as it's more than two divs I will not bother I will create an SVG and put it in or ask somebody who's actually good at that to create an SVG for me so what did we learn do fun <coughs> things do things with technology that it's not meant to do. Whatever your chosen technology is, whether it's databases, whether it's JavaScript, whatever. Try and do things in a different way. Try and create something just for you that is fun, that is not your job. Try to abuse the technology just to find out what it does when you break it. Play around. Do things that you didn't think were possible. Find some, somebody and put yourself to a challenge to create something. Learn new things. Come up with new and different ways to solve a problem because I promise you, you will learn something out of it. And just because it's useless doesn't mean that it's a waste of time. These things that I create, they make me happy and I learn a lot from them. And I have the community aspect of people actually reaching out to me and saying that that got them into coding, that creating CSS make them so happy that what they actually did was they, they learned JavaScript and all other things to do more with te technology and it, it's, it's, a com it's not a complete waste of time. I find it loads of fun, it makes me really happy. I have some resources for you, so if you don't know CodePen already, CodePen is uh, a platform where you can showcase your code. People are able to see all your markup, your CSS and your JavaScript, there is a little browser window that uh, life reloads whenever you change something. You can save your bits of code, put them in a little gallery, people can watch them, like them, share them, and work with them and for, uh, fork them. So that's a lot of fun. There is also daily CSS, uh, CSS daily images, which is an email challenge that sends you an email with a queue for create a superhero today or something like that with just CSS. And that is loads of fun to see how people get into coding because what happens often is that people who have no clue about coding do these challenges and learn about CSS and get really excited about technology. And I think that is what it's all about, to be excited about your jobs and about technology and about coding and learn that it's actually really cool and that it's magic. So be happy for what you do and create some, some nice and cool things and bring back the magic and yeah, please go out and create and do fun things and be happy with what you are with creating and be creators. So have fun. Thank you. <laughs>